أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بارك الحمد لله we start by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we send our salam and salawat on Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and we clear our intention that this time, this effort that we are giving to please only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Quran. And in this journey, we have started uh, probably uh, two months before and we have done through so many times uh, up to the lesson eight. Inshallah ta'ala, we will start a new lesson today, lesson nine. And as we, every weekend we do, uh, we will go through a quick review first to refresh my memory and all of our memory and then we will go to the new lessons for today, inshallah ta'ala. So, we started with the thing that, you know, with the chart, I don't want to go to the, all the slides, that, you know, uh, in Arabic language, there are three types of words, you know, ism, fail, and harf. We all of us know this, uh, the definition of these things. We have so many examples of this. And then we talked about the ism has four properties, okay? And the properties are status, number, gender, and type. Then in the status, what do you mean by status? That the status means that in a way a word, whether the word is doing something in the in the word, or is it something that we are talking about the word in the sentence? Is the details of the sentence? So that's what we talked about, and also we say that something that comes up the off is jar. Um, also we talked about number. Then in Arabic there's a one you know different thing than other than English. That in Arabic we have a singular, plural, and pair like a pair. And in the status, number, and gender, we talked about the chart, the Muslim chart, and we said every time that this chart is very, very important, and you will see today also, every lesson has some implication from that chart. So we must memorize that chart, the Muslim chart that we, we talked about. In the gender, we have masculine and feminine. We say most of the words are masculine, except there are few rules, a few tricks. Uh, you look out for those things, and those are feminine. And there are few words, they are feminine because the Arabs say so, and we have a small paragraph to memorize those few words, probably 17 words. Then the last thing we talked about, the type on the, on the, on the first uh, phase of the lesson. And in the type, most of the words are common, but there are seven ways that you can find a proper, a proper type of thing, ism, and it could be a proper name, you know, it has al, it could be a pronoun or a pointer, ism mausul, like, you know, al lazina. Uh, the one being called like yeah, all these things we have done and I have sent the emails to all the brothers So if you have forgotten about something you can go through and and refresh your memory and you can ask me And I will try my best to answer the question you know, and you can ask me anytime when you find me in the prayer uh, Then last week we started a new phase, a new section So the first phase was about the word, like one single word Then we say we talk about fragments and fragments are more than one word but less than a sentence. So it's not a whole sentence yet. It's you know, more than one word, could be two words or three words joined together. And we gave an example, the words are like a brick, okay? And fragments and you know, the, all these frag different type of fragments that we're gonna talk about, they are like cement. So where we bring two bricks or three bricks together and put the cement and make you know, a section of the wall. And then inshallah ta'ala, when you have few fragments, we join the fragments and we make it, we make a whole sentence, and inshallah ta'ala, we should be able to read and understand the Quran. So first fragment that we talked about last week is called idafa. Idafa means that you know it is a, a way of joining two sentences, that you know the and it is about the off. So that you know the word before the off is called mudaf, and the word after the off called mudaf ilay, and we have give some example like the house of Allah. So the house, the word house is before the of. So the house is mudaf. The word Allah is after the of. That is called the mudaf ilay. So the, 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 the whole thing called mudaf, mudaf ilay. And we have some, only four rules about mudaf, mudaf ilay. The first rule, that the mudaf and the mudaf ilay. Meaning the two words cannot be far away. They must be with each other. They must be with each other. We cannot say one mudaf is here, then there's some other words and the mudaf ilay. No, they must be each other. Then we have for muda the word before the of has two rules. The waf, the word cannot have al, cannot have alif lam, and it must be light. We talked about light and heavy before in the previous lesson. So the two rules for muda is it cannot have al and it must be light. And only one rule for muda ilay that muda ilay must be in jar status. 
meaning it must be in with castra most of the time and other rules of the jar that we talked about before. So these are the only two, two main rules of the mudas mudas ilay. Uh, we had some, these are the rules I, I was talking about. So there are two parts, mudas mudas ilay, nothing comes between mudas and mudas ilay. And you know, uh, that's why the mudas must be light and unable to take alif lam. And mudas ilay in the jar status, recall that the jar word comes after the off. Okay, and that's why if you see a mudaf mudaf like you can be easily easily translate that word now. Okay, like the word uh, the two word ibadur rahman, ibadur, and this is actually not only a grammar thing. Look, Allah subhanahu wa taala put ibadur rahman meaning ibad means the slave of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and rahman means the merciful, the most merciful. So that the servant is always close to merciful. Just just like mudaf mudaf ilay cannot be separated, Ibadur Rahman also cannot be separated. As long as you are a true slave of Allah, Ar Rahman will be always, always with you. Just like we say Ibadur Rahman, and we have seen plenty of examples, and I have sent you the email, so inshallah we'll close our review here, and we'll go to a new lesson. Now today's lesson is not about another fragment. We are on fragment number one, Idafa. So from Idafa, we're gonna learn something else that is connected to Idafa. And then we'll go, go to the next type of fragment. We will learn about five types of fragments. We're only doing number one now, you know, idafa. So today what we're going to learn about is pronouns, okay? Pronouns is very, very important. In every page of the Quran, almost every alternate line, you will find a pronoun, okay? Pronouns are very important, even in English literature. You know, we don't call people by name all the time. If you read a book, there's so many pronouns, he, she, we, I, they, all these are pronouns, okay? Uh, so there are two types of pronoun in Arabic. That's the first thing, independent pronoun and attached pronoun. Very simple to understand, very simple to remember. Independent pronoun and attached pronoun. I will show you the list and everything that, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Just before we go through the pronouns, remember the pronouns, all the pronouns. We talked about pronouns once in all of the four properties, status, number, gender, and type. So which one has the pronoun? Type. 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 What is that? There are seven things that we read and we say that these are proper. And one of the things was pronouns. So pronouns are always, always type. Always the type is proper. The pronouns are always proper. So if you look at a pronoun in Quran, so one thing you know, because as I said before, when you see a ism, and ism means like everything, not fail. You have to find out four properties. You have to know their status, you have to know their gender, you have to know their number, and you have to know their type. So one thing is given. If you see a pronoun, right away you know the type is proper. Meaning it's a specific thing, it's not common. Okay, it's a proper type. So that's one thing we know. We have to know about another three things. As we go through, inshallah ta'ala, we will learn about those things. We must memorize the pronoun chart. So there is a chart for pronoun and it is really easy to memorize if you concentrate. It is much easier than the chart that we learned before Muslim and Musliman. But it is very, very similar, you know, because why similar? You will see the chart, you will see that, you know, that chart, we had three columns, singular, pair, and plural. This pronoun chart also has singular, dual, and plural. So it's a very similar type of thing. And if you remember this chart, when you're going to finish ism, and we're gonna go learn about fail, like the actions, the verb, in that time also we need this kind of chart. This chart will come handy all the time, all the time, okay? So let's look at the chart, but I think before we go to the chart, okay, yeah, this is the chart, so very simple, just like English, we have first person, second person, third person, okay? Now, these are all pronouns, and these are all independent pronouns. They are not attached to anything. They are just by itself, okay? What is an attached pronoun, we'll see it very soon. And when I show you an example, you'll understand, no, this is what attached pronoun is. You know already what is attached pronoun. So these things, with the meaning, we must memorize this. Also, if you look at the chart, all of them have a thing called rafa. So what is rafa? What are the four properties? One of the properties is rafa, which one is this? Is it status, number, gender, or type? Status. The status is So we already know the status also. So in pronoun, we know the type, the fourth one, it is always proper. We also know the status. So when the pronoun is independent, the status is always rafa. The status is always rafa. Doesn't matter how they're ending. You may say, okay, this is her fatha at the end. Remember we talked about Musliman, is the, the fatha Muslima, 
you know, just, just the ending sound is a, ah, so that's maybe nasab, no, because this is the whole word, this is not the chart thing, they are by themselves, doesn't matter how they're ending, okay, see this one has an alif at the end, this one has a kasra at the end, this one has a, you know, dhamma at the end, it does not matter, if you see these words, these pronouns in, in, in the Quran, they are always rafa, they're always rafa, because they are independent pronouns, like for example, Allah huwa, you know, la ilaha illallah hayyul qayyum. All these things, the like, huwa is there, okay, okay. Nahnu, okay, anta, antum. All these are pronouns. So we must memorize this chart, okay. How do we memorize? We memorize from the top, okay. So we say huwa, <coughs> huwa means he. Huma means both of them, so two people, two male people, okay. And whom, like we always say whom, okay. Whom means them okay so hua huma whom hia means she hia means she huma is again both of the female so these two are very similar huma and huma so it doesn't matter that and you will how then how are you going to understand am, am i talking about two men or two women you will understand with the context when it comes in a sentence you will understand uh, there will be other clues to understand that but when i talk about two men or two women both of them are huma okay so huwa huma hum hiya huma hunna hunna means all of the female like when you talked about whom they if i say they are the people of masjid or they are the people of quaker hill and if i use the word whom it includes men and women as i mentioned before like muslimuna when i say all the muslims okay it includes male and female but if i say hunna then only female hunna is exclusive just like any other Arabic word, any other ism. So hunna means only females, but hum means masculine and feminine both. So these are the six things, and out of the six, two of them is very similar. Hua, you'll always remember hua means he, okay? Uh, huma, hum, hiya, huma, hunna. These are the first person, okay? And these are all rafa. Let's go to the second person. Anta means you. Antuma means both of you male and antum means all of you okay so anti means you she so i'm talking to a girl she antum are again the same like huma was the same in the middle one these two also same masculine feminine antuma antuma and both of them look at the finishing with an alif so huma huma antuma antuma there's an alif at the end okay and that one is antunna just that was hunna so that was also antunna very simple anta you ant, antuma is both of you and antum is all of you male or female together and here anti is feminine antuma is both of you feminine just like the both of you masculine and antunna is all of you ladies all of you sisters all of you daughters all of you mothers so anything that you use are called the pronouns and tunna. And the last one is ana means I and <coughs> nahnu means we. Okay, ana means I, nahnu means we. And these are called the independent pronouns. And the independent <coughs> pronouns the always rafa. Always rafa. So if I ask you, don't look at what is the ending sound, okay, anta or ana or nahnu. You just say it is rafa. What is the type of the pronouns? Proper, always proper. So now we have to know about yes. Um, <coughs> when you say it, it, it is always rafa, mm. it means it cannot take any other form. Right? It can. We'll it talk. Can. The attach, attached version will take the other form. Oh, but, but when, when it is uh, like. Yes, it's independent, it cannot take other form. Yeah. In that sentence, if you find a proper, uh, like a full independent pronoun, it cannot take other form. It must be multi rafa. And also, uh, the number and gender, the two things that we remember, you can easily see the number and gender, right? The meaning says there, right? So who means he? So what is he? Masculine, obviously, right? Is it, is it one singular plural or dual? Singular. So everybody knows that. If I say antum means you, what is he? We already say antum means masculine. So it is number is you, meaning one you, and also it is masculine. Anti is number is you. Antunna is plural. So number and gender all you know. So all these words so 6 9 you know uh, 12 and 14 this 14 words you know the meaning you know their status you know their number you know their gender and you know their type 
So all four properties you know from this chart. And you must, must, must memorize this, okay? Once we do this, we will see the attached version of this. So the independent version is always Rafa. The attached version could be Nasser or could be Jar. Obviously, there are two other things remaining. Could be Nasser and could be Jar. And when it will be Nasser and when it will be Jar, inshallah, that's what we're going to learn very soon. And then also very easy to remember that, those things, okay? So again, from the top, Hua, Huma, Hum, Hia, Huma, Hunna, Anta, Antuma, Antum, Antum, Anti, Antuma, Antunna, Ana, Nahu. Okay, very, very simple and very, very easy to understand because these two are the same, Huma is the same, and they finish with the Ali. And the first person is I and we, we always say Ana and Nahu. Ana and Nahu is very, very easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used Ana so many times for himself. Most of the time he used Nahnu also. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Nahnu, that you know, we send down the Quran, we send down the rain from the sky. We are the one you know, who created the sky and the heaven, okay? So Allah talks something as, as himself as we instead of I. Why? Because the we is called a royal we. You know, a, a, it's, a, it's a sign of honor. Uh, especially you know, even if you look at the, some sermons given by a president or like a queen or a king, they always, they never say, no, I declare war on this country. They say, we declare to them. We sanction this bill. So that we means the, 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 the grand year we actually, the royal we. So Allah use the you also, or, or, yeah, we all the time in the sentence. Now, so now, and I have, gonna, I'm gonna email this to all the brothers, and you can open it up and remember, I think if you spend 10 minutes maximum, you will be able to remember. It's very, very easy, and you know, even if you know a little bit of Arabic, you know what is Ana means, okay, what is Nahnu means. So it's, it's not gonna be very difficult to remember. The Atta's version could be, bit difficult to remember so you may need a little bit more time to remember the Atta's version. So the Atta's version for Hua, Huma and Hum, the Hua could be who or he. The Hua, the Nasab or Jar could be who or he. Don't say who is Nasab and he is Jar, no, not like this. It could be who or he. We'll talk about it later inshallah. Okay, so when Hua, the Rafa version of he, becomes a nasab and become a nasab and a jar, it could be either who or he. Huma, it remains huma or sometimes it's become hima. Huma, it remains huma. Then you can ask, okay, then how am I going to know the rafa or nasab or jar? You will have other clues to know. As we go through the learning the process, you will know why it is nasab and why it is rafa. But huma remains huma or hima. And whom, you know, whom becomes either whom or him. Like, you know, Alayhim, like him, the one of the very common ones, which is like him. And some of the recitations, you know, Sirat al Lazina, Anamta, Alayhim, like him. Some of the say Alay like also. Some of the recitations, Alay like also. Okay? Uh, the, the most common one that we say is Alay him. So it could be whom or him. Okay? And this means them. Okay? In the Nasab or Jar version. Okay? Like if we say Alay him, what does Alay him mean actually? Alay him means on them. Okay? So the them is not doing anything. Allah says, Oh Allah. Give us as you have blessed them, like the people of the before, okay? The Sirat al Ladina and Amta alayhim. So, so this is Nasab or Jar could be Nasab, this could be whom or him. The Hia one, Hia becomes Ha only. For both Nasab and Jar, it becomes Ha, okay? And it is the same, the middle one is still the same, Huma or Hima, and Nasab and Jar become Hunna or Hinna. So see that even the Rafa version is Hunna, the Nasab and Jar version is Hunna, but sometimes you can find it Hinna. I think in the Quran there is one or two places you find Hinna, okay? This is a bit tricky to understand, the second person. Okay. Second person, we said Anta, Antuma, Antuma. If you just take the An out, it becomes Ta, Tuma, Tum. Forget about the An part. It becomes Ta, Tuma, Tum. And if you replace the ta with a ka, that's what it becomes ka, tuma, tum. Okay? Don't ask me why the ta becomes ka. That's how they that's how they know it. So okay. So anta means you, the ka means you also, but nasab or jar version. Okay? Antuma means nasab, you know, you, both of you, both of you. It's in Rafa version. But when it comes becomes a nasab or jar, it becomes huma. Okay, and antum means all of you, it becomes whom. Like rabbukum, so many times we use rabbukum, you know, and in the, in the Quran. So the all of you, we're talking about all of you, okay. 
same thing here, anti. So what will be anti become? Key. Key. Because just because of if this become cast, this become key. Okay? And uh, antuma will be same thing, puma. And antunna will be kunna. Okay? Antuma will be kunna. And the last one. For ana, I, it is already given. If it become e, it's jar. E. Like the English letter E. If it become ni, it's nato. So for ana is a special thing. Rafa. Rafa version is ana. If it is become e, it's become jar. If it is become ni, it's become nasa. A lot of people make a mistake. They say nahnu, we start with noon, so they think nahnu, the jar version is ni. But no, nahnu jar version is all nasa or jar to be na. Na, noon with an alif and a fatah. Okay? So that is the Nasab and Jar version. Only one version is Nahnu is Na. And that's why we say Rabbana, Walamna. Rabbana, you know, Fakfirlana, Zumubana. Rabbana. Oh, so many times we know it starts with Rabbana, right? More than 40 know it starts with Rabbana. The end Rabbana means our Lord. That's the Na. That's where the Na comes from, okay? Okay? Rabbana la kalham. Rabbana la kalham. How many pronouns are there? One is Rabbana. La is, means for. Ka means you. So two pronouns are there. Rabbana lakana. Every day we say this one. How many times? You know, more than 17 times we say this one. But today, inshallah, we understand the meaning, right? Rabbana is the, because of that na. O our Lord. La. Ka means you. For you. So I'll sing Rabbana all the praise for you. Rabbana lakal ham. Okay? And you will find Lord, inshallah, tomorrow we'll do a lot of examples to you know, understand this. So, Ana becomes either E or Ni. Nahnu becomes Na. So this chart is very very important. If you don't memorize it, we can we cannot proceed to the next section. Uh, just a few facts uh, about the pronouns, and inshallah we'll finish today. The status of every independent pronoun has an attached version. Independent pronouns are always rafa. We already talked about that, right? And some pronouns like anti may look like jar because ending is kasra, right? But, but, you know, because it is an independent pronoun, it is always rafa. We already talked about this one, okay? Attached pronouns will be either nasab or jar, depending on the context in which they are used, as I mentioned before. Number and gender, this is straightforward. If the pronoun chart is memorized with its respective meaning, example, whom is masculine and plural, anti is feminine and singular, it is. So if you, if you know the meaning of the word, you know the number and gender. Nobody can stop you to you know, uh, tell you that one. And the type, all pronouns are proper, independent or attached. So all pronouns are proper, doesn't matter they're independent or, or attached. Okay? Now, this is the last bit for today. You know, and inshallah we will finish and we'll have one or two examples and we'll finish and tomorrow we'll work more on this. Now that we talked about their four properties, status, number, gender, and, and type. We just talked about this. Now there's a little bit of grammar thing. Whenever you see an ism and a pronoun attached to it, so we are talking about attached pronouns, okay? Whenever you see an ism and a pronoun is attached at the end of it, okay? That ism is usually a mudaf. You know, that's why we were learning pronoun just after mudaf, mudaf ilay. And the attached pronoun is mudaf ilay, okay? So what is mudaf again? Remind me. In the uh, two words, what is the which one is mudaf? Before of. So we are saying the ism is before of and it will be always mudaf. And mudaf ilay is the attached pronoun. So if you know that this is mudaf and this is mudaf ilay, what comes between mudaf and mudaf ilay? Who joins this thing in English? Of. of. That's the main word, of. So you can be able to translate. So if I say, Rabbukum, Rabbukum, Rabbu means, Rab means the Lord. Is the word Rab has Alif Lam? No. no. Is it light? Yes. It's not Rabbun or Rabban, right? It's light. So it is a mudaf. And Kum means you. And if you all, that's what we learn in the chart. That's why the chart is important. So what is Rabbukum means? Yes, so the Lord of you all. In the proper way we say, your Lord. All of your Lord. Okay, so all of our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why you call Rabbukum. Rabbana, same thing. Rabbana. Is the word Rabbah has Alif Lam? No. Is it light? Yes, it is light. And Na, 
comes from the Atal version of the of the Nahnu. So Rabbana means our Lord or Lord of ours, right? And now when you know Mudaf Mudaf Ilayya, and if you see that yes, it has fulfilling the condition, it doesn't have an Alif Lam, and it is like, and there's an attached pronoun with it, and together it makes it Mudaf Mudaf Ilayya. So what is the status of Mudaf of attached pronoun with it? Jar, because the mudaf ilai cannot have anything but jar. That's what we learned, right? So now we understand one clue we already gave. So in the chart we say it could be nasab or jar. But if this attached pronoun forms a mudaf mudaf ilai, it will be always always jar because we know the word after the of is always jar. The word after the of is always jar. So in rabbana the na means we. Okay, that is jar version of it. Okay, rabbukum the kum is also jar version. So, mudaf mudaf ilay, that is the rule. Remember with it, the first word before the of cannot have alif lam and it must be light. And the mudaf ilay, only one rule, it has to be jar. It has to be jar. Okay. So, that's what we learned. We'll talk about three or four examples now and inshallah ta'ala we'll finish. Tomorrow we'll talk about more about this and we'll do more examples. If you do more examples, you'll be able to learn it. So your job is to, I know today is Saturday, you know, and Alhamdulillah, we live a life that every weekend we have something, you know, you're busy, dawahs and everything, but you know, have spent at least 10 minutes or 15 minutes to memorize the chart. Because if you, if you don't memorize it today, you won't be memorizing it any more time, okay? You just spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes, okay? Sit down at home, you know, whenever you can, before you come to tomorrow's Fajr, inshallah ta'ala, memorize the chart, and then it will be easy for us to do our, do our exercise. So, Let's look at the first example, we already talked about that. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore. So kum comes from that one. So rabbu kums means, you know, uh, your Lord. Rasulihi. So what is this meaning? His messenger. His messenger. How? Rasul is a word. Rasul means, what is Rasul? Everybody knows what is Rasul means. Is the Rasul has an alif lam, does it submit? No. Does it heavy? Does this finishing with tanvin, like the double kasra, double dhamma? No, right? So it's, there's no noon sound. So Rasul is a, is a no alif lam and a light word. And he comes from which form? Wow. Hua. Hua's form is he. And this is the jar version of the Hua. So Rasul he means his messenger. So Hua, when it becomes he, it means his, right? So everybody should memorize the chart, then you will understand. So the tomorrow's exercise will do like this. We'll, we'll have some words. Your job is to find the pronoun and tell me what is the original version of the pronoun. So if I ask the, the which one is the pronoun here? So you say, okay, the kum is the pronoun. And then I ask you, kum comes from where? What is the original form of the kum? What is the rafa version of the kum? Antum. What is the rasha? Antum. The third column on the second person, okay? Antum, okay? So that's one. Abduhu. You know, this is in our, in, in our Shahada. Ashadu Allah ila ila Allah. Ashadu Allah Muhammadan. Abduhu wa Rasuluhu. Abduhu. Abd means slave. Hu means. But we said, you know, who could be Nasab or Jar. But here it is. It is Jar because it is Mudaf Mudaf ilay. It is Mudaf Mudaf ilay, meaning his slave. His slave. See, if you know the grammar now, now if you look at it, you can easily translate it now. You just have to bring it off in between. So it will be slave of his, or you can say his slave. Okay? <coughs> the last one for today, I think. Ni'mati. Ni'mati. Ni'ma means the blessings. So what is the ending part of it? What kind of pronoun is that, Brother Mustafid? I. I, yes. E. e. And E, we say E is always jar, and Ni is always Nasab. Okay, it's easy to remember. So ni'mati means my blessing. My blessing. Which surah has this word? You recited it yesterday. In my great time. Abduha. Amma bi ni'mati rabbika. Amma bi ni'mati rabbika. What does rabbika mean? Rabbika. Your Lord. Very good. Rabbika fahaddi. Okay. Inshallah. So we'll finish it here today. Uh, so just I'm gonna email it this morning, inshallah, when I when I go back home. And then please go through the chart. If you do not go through the chart, 
it will be very hard for doing the exercise for tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Okay? And one question, actually, there are two mistakes, as Brother Tariq mentioned in the exam, in the answer sheet. The zira'ayni, you said the zira'ay, that is actually will be common. And also, an najmu, meaning the star. An najmu means star. What will be the uh, gender of this? Is the stars feminine or masculine? Feminine. Why feminine? Arab said so. Because the Arab said so. Because it's in the story that we, yeah. we, we learned about. Okay. So and that, but in the answer probably it was masculine. So I have corrected those two, and I will send you this thing. Inshallah, Allah. Subhanakallah. Allahumma bihamdika. Shabbat Allahil Hamd. Astaghfirullah.